good afternoon students so today we are going to study next uh, lecture of uh, introduction to molecular biotechnology and today we will learn about certain very interesting uh, techniques that is known as southern northern and western hybridization uh, these are also said to be bloating techniques and uh, another uh, process that we are going to learn is uh, about polymerase chain reaction so two topics we are going to discuss today very first is all about hybridization and second one is about polymerase chain reaction under hybridization we are going to discuss three techniques southern hybridization northern and western hybridization and once we complete with the hybridization we will proceed for polymerase chain reaction so here comes the bloating techniques since you all know like uh, uh, since you all know like plant is having dna rna and proteins but uh, uh, how can we separate dna from the rna and rna from the proteins and proteins from the dna and rna for separating the dna rna and proteins we have three methods out of these three methods very first is a southern hybridization that is used for separating the dna molecules then the next is rna that is used for the separation of uh, uh, say uh, next is northern that is used for the separation of rna and finally we have western and that is used for the hybridization of uh, separation of proteins now i will start with the very first that is southern bloating hybridization don't get confused with the bloating uh, either i say bloating or either i say southern hybridization uh, it is the same thing only so when we talk for the southern bloating technique it is any Uh, it is a method uh, because we are talking for the molecular biotechnology so here the scientist will be molecular biologist and uh, uh, one one of the molecular biologist named as em sadran uh, in the year 1975 he actually developed this uh, he actually developed this method uh, for the analysis of genes which are present in the dna restriction fragment now i just hope you all are much familiar with the restriction fragment dna means dna that is the genetic content restriction fragment means uh, when uh, dna is act acted upon by restriction enzyme then this dna is broken into fragments which may be of various uh, varying lengths then these fragments which are the these fragments so these fragments which are the result of uh, uh, fragmentation these uh, uh, which are the result of action of uh, restriction endonuclease it is said to be uh, it is said to be restriction fragments right so this uh, this technique was said to be sadran because it was after the name of the scientist that is sadran so sadran was the molecular biologist who actually developed this technique so this was the reason he is uh, uh, this method is recognized after his name and it is called as sadran bloating technique if we talk for the uses of sadran bloating technique then very first one is see we have different restriction fragments we are these are said to be restriction fragment we are going to have different restriction fragments and on these restriction fragments is located the genes here are located genes and these genes are located on to the chromosome right but to know exactly which gene is located at what site of the restriction fragment uh, that in turn that all information in turn is provided by sadran bloating technique that means it could help in the creation of a physical map within a gene that is normally located onto a chromosome second thing 
it also tells us like if we if i say one genie is that is controlling the height is located here and if i say the same gene is located at this place also then it also reveals how many number of copies of same gene is present in the genome or it also helps uh, in providing the information by which uh, we can know about the degree of similarity of the gene when it is compared with the other complementary gene say if we have a then obviously opposite complementary we are going to have t so degree degree of similarity of the gene how much they are similar among each other this can also be uh, this information is also provided by the technique that is said to be southern blotting technique so here is the procedure of uh, southern blotting technique uh this is the just a minute i will uh, place the i'm trying to place the image along with the explanation so that it becomes easy for you all so see we are talking about the procedure procedure because we are to uh, by, with the help of southern blotting we are studying what we are studying the we are uh, capable of separating the dna so obviously very first uh, because we are to separate the dna and uh, you must be uh, thinking uh, now why we need to separate the dna we need to separate the dna because the dna is combined with many other uh, uh, other forms also that means it may be combined with the rna or with the proteins etc so this is the reason we need to separate the dna and moreover the dna fragment that we are going to have it may it may be needing processing uh, for example as i told you like certain genes are like they have a uh, uh, certain genes are like they have uh, say uh, co coding regions also and non coding regions also but the requirement is only of coding region so we need to process the dna that means we need to separate the dna uh dna fragment that means we need to separate the dna fragment uh, uh, from the uh, ones which are not required right so very first that we require is we require the dna population so this is the dna population and uh, this is, the genes are located on to this genomic dna right now Uh, because we need uh, need to run the we need the uh, exact fragment only so this dna is cut with the help of restriction enzyme when this dna will be cut very first step is the digestion of dna digestion means uh, uh, formation of the digestion means uh, this if this is the dna then this dna is to be broken into number of fragments this is said to be digestion and uh, the number of enzyme it may be either one enzyme it may be more than one in one enzyme or maybe more than the one enzyme as a result we used to have dna fragments we are having dna fragments and those uh, dna fragments may be of various various length once we had uh, the source of dna and once the dna is acted upon by restriction and the nucleases and we have various uh, uh various uh, uh, dna fragments which are of uh, uh, different different length then these uh, different different length dna fragments they are allowed to run through the agarose gel electrophoresis now agarose gel electrophoresis is what electrophoresis that means here dna is going to separate on the basis of charge that it is carrying out and this process is carried in the presence of electric field right so see this is electrophoresis now the gel that is prepared is of a gross we used to have electrophoretic unit and that i let you know later on you just uh, need to understand this much 
we used to have this uh, dna agarose gel and this agarose gel is connected to a battery this agarose gel is connected to a battery and here we used to place that gel that is prepared now here with the help of comb like structure instrument we used to prepare the wells and into these wells these all dna fragments which are of different different length are poured here now when electricity will be supplied since dna are negatively charged so they will start moving to the opposite pole that is towards the positive charge when when dna will start migrating towards the positive charge you will see different bands are these dark one are said to be bands different bands will be synthesized and these bands are on the, on the basis of length the one that is a smaller in the length that will uh, that will move faster to the opposite uh, pole and the ones which are uh, a larger in the length they will move uh, they will remain behind only and in this way all the dna fragments on the basis of their molecular size very important again i repeat dna fragments on the basis of their molecular size they get separated on the gel that is said to be a gross gel right so till here three steps we have done very first we had source of the genomic dna this source is a uh, first we have source of the dna the source is uh, then uh, fragmented this source is fragmented and as a result we had number of the dna fragments these number of fragments are separated from each other by the process that is said to be a gross gel electrophoresis now you must be thinking ma'am why smaller fragments are remaining uh, uh, behind and why uh, why smaller fragments they move at a higher speed and they just reaches the opposite electrode and why uh, the fragments which are of uh, larger size they remain behind now actually what happens when we talk for the gross gel a gross gel is actually having pore like structure it is having actually pore like structure now the dna molecule size of which is very large uh, that means the dna fragment of larger size it will be present as say some some somehow in this way when it will penetrate from one pore to another pore then to the third to next and next when it will come to this end then at uh, at these timings what what is going to happen it will it is going to take a larger time to reach to the opposite pole but the dna fragment that is of smaller size its size must be this much it will easily pass through the pores and will reach the opposite end since dna is negatively charged so it will move towards the positive charge so on the basis of the very important so on the basis of molecular size all these dna fragments are going to separate from each other and they are uh, visible in form of these bands so shorter dna fragment is uh, towards the positive pole and larger dna fragment is towards the negative pole now these dna fragments are now allowed to denature denaturation means what they are treated with the sodium hydroxide and uh, denaturation is actually the process where denaturation is actually the process where double stranded dna is allowed to get converted into single stranded dna that is said to be the denaturation of the uh, dna so as a result of the double stranded dna it gets converted into single stranded dna this is said to be denaturation and denaturation of dna is carried in the alkali that is a, a sodium hydroxide solution <coughs> now very important now the apparatus that is see if you could see if you could see see this is the buffer uh, this is the apparatus right and in of this apparatus is placed the buffer solution above the buffer solution is placed this agarose gel which is having the dna but this dna is denatured that means single standard dna is now present in this agarose gel above this agarose gel is placed 
a filter that is said to be cellulose this uh, uh, this is a gross gel and above and uh, above this a gross gel is play uh, this is buffer and uh, above this buffer is placed a gross gel that is consisting of dna and above this a gross gel is placed cellulose nitrate filter and above the ni cellulose nitrate filter are placed many dry filter filter sheet right now buffer is what buffer is the one uh, that is resisting any change in the ph Uh, since uh, uh, molecules are av having the pH level, so to avoid any further denaturation of the DNA, we are placing the gross gel that is having the single stranded DNA uh, into the buffer so that DNA does not get more denatured. Right? Then what we are doing? We are baking uh, this whole apparatus at eighty degrees Celsius. When we do this, that the See here are placed the dry filters. Now, whenever you place anything dry onto the wet thing, what happens? Wet molecules, that means the water molecules, they start moving towards the dry filter, uh, dry area, and as a result, dry area that also gets wet. So, uh, when when number of filter dry filter papers will be placed above the gross gel, then this gross gel will start moving towards the upper side. and as a result these uh, it will attach to these filters when we uh, place this whole apparatus at a, at a temperature that is said to be 80 degree celsius then uh, that is a particular time when these single stranded dna they bind to the cellulose nitrate filter because beyond uh, before it reaches to the dry filter it has to cross to the cellulose nitrate filter and cellulose nitrate filter is a kind of the filter uh, that uh, helps uh, in the attachment that means in the perfect binding of uh, that helps in the perfect binding of uh, single stranded dna to the nitrate filter now now we are left with two steps very next is hybridize with the probe hybridize with the probe that means we we the dna single stranded dna that is a single stranded dna which will be present here uh, we need to separate those dna so those all dna will be uh, hybridized with the probe probe is actually the non sequence a number of probes will be added but the one that will be having the sequence opposite to this single stranded dna they both will bind together say if this is the probe and uh, then if this is the uh, if this is the probe and say this is the dna then the one uh, one probe that will be having the sequence opposite to the dna they will bind together very important probe is uh, always of non sequence but we do not know the sequence of the uh, single stranded dna so wherever probe will be binding binding means hybridizing uh, that that will be the that the, then by knowing the sequence of the probe we can also know the sequence of the dna right then uh, these are the, the uh, then it is allowed to pass through the x ray and when it is allowed to pass through the x ray so these bands will be uh, these bands will be uh, formed and uh, then we can detect the kind of nature of dna so this is about uh, the process that is uh, uh, this is all about the sudran uh, bloating so i will just explain you uh, this uh, flow chart also so here what is happening out dna this is the dna population that is taken and it is allowed to act uh, by the one or more restriction enzyme consequently that means as a result we have dna fragments which are of unequal length these dna fragments are allowed to pass through a gross cell electrophoresis where dna gets separated very important on the basis of their size now these uh, fragments uh, which are present in the gel it is denatured uh, by the alkali treatment and then uh, this gel that is having denatured dna it is allowed to be placed on the top of a uh, buffer saturated filter paper that means it is placed above the buffer saturated filter paper
Now uh, this is placed above the buffer saturated uh, filter paper. Now upper surface of the gel is covered with the filter that is said to be cellulose filter, and cellulose filter is further uh, covered with the number of the dry filters. Dry filter is actually responsible for uh, for drawing kinch uh, na is uh, responsible for drawing the buffer through the gel because it is wet. So from here it will uh, uh, it will. Uh, from here it will uh, draw the buffer right liquid portion will be uh, will be sucked up up on the upper side due to the presence of these filter which are dry in the nature and uh, since we know now this a gross gel is having single standard dna now uh, the nitrose filter this nitrose filter it binds to the dna when uh, when 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 this buffer will be moving up within the buffer is presence of dna that are single stranded and when this buffer along with the single stranded dna will start moving to the upward direction then it will meet the nitrate filter once it meets the nitrate filter and once the temperature is reached to 80 degrees celsius uh, this nitrate filter uh, uh, within the nitrate filter the molecule that is named as nitrocellulose it binds to the single stranded dna right that means the dna fragments are permanently fixed to the nitrocellulose filter now this uh, whole solution this whole is placed in a solution that is having radio labeled rna probe is actually rna why rna why we need rna for the separation of dna because dna are now single standard single standard dna are there and uh, this is the reason Uh, we are using the probes which are uh, those probes we are using which are rna now where binding will take place how we will come to know actually we the rna that is used you no know, this rna is further radio labeled that means it is attached to the molecule that will give the that will fluorescence that will produce the light once it hybridizes with uh, its opposite sequence right thereafter now the radio labeled dna now the radio label dna is going to bind with the complementary dna that is single standard and uh, filter is thoroughly washed with the probe so that only the ones that are uh, uh, that are present onto the that are just hybridized they only remain and other uh, other old dna they are separated from uh, from the uh, uh, from the solution so this is the whole scenario where we had uh, genomic dna and this genomic dna with the help of action of restriction enzyme it is separated into the dna fragments and once it is separated uh, then this is separated and then it is converted to single stranded dna then we are using a single standard rna single stranded rna probe this rna probe and uh, it will bind to the dna rna probe sequence is always known to us so say if the sequence is t g c a then if it binds to this sequence because we only knew the sequence of this one but it will always bind to its complementary sequence then we can also know the sequence of this uh, dna so this will is going to be a c g and t right this is going to be to be the sequence of dna now this this uh, rna probe uh, this rna probe that it is radio labeled radio labeled means how we will come to know like it uh, binding has taken place it is further attached to the radio label atoms that will fluoresces under the radio autography right so uh, here certain hybridization has taken place then we will wash this solution to ensure 
that only binded fragments they remain within the solution and other all are removed when uh, when these fragments will be uh, will be uh, will be just uh, uh, displayed they will be exposed to the x rays uh, in this way image will be absorbed since sequence of this fragment was known so this sequence of this fragment can be very easily identified so this is all about the very first technique that is sadran bloating technique or it is also said to be sadran hybridization and uh, this is used for the separation of dna now i come to the next one there are certain uh, before i come to the next one uh, there are certain uh, demerits of uh, sadran hybridization there are certain demerits and uh, demerits are it cannot be applied directly to the for the transfer of mrna right because mr mrna actually rna cannot bind to the nitrocellulose filter so it is only used for the separation of dna only because nitrocellulose filter paper does not bind with the rna so this is the drawback uh, that is uh, this is the drawback okay then the next procedure is next procedure is nadran bloating technique nadran bloating technique nadran bloating technique is the technique that is developed by alvin et al and it was developed by alvin et al in the year 1979 Alvin et al. Uh, uh, he actually uh, devised a technique, and in this technique, RNA bands. Now, because nadran is used for the uh, separation of RNA molecules, so uh, so this is a, a technique the in which RNA bands are transferred from gel and known to a chemically reactive paper. Uh, if you people remember, then I said in the previous so that means in the southern hybridization we used nitrocellulose filter, but here we the paper that is used is amino benzyl oxymethyl cellulose paper. This paper is prepared from the Wattman filter paper, and uh, after the preparation it is diazotized. and later on converted into a reactive paper and uh, this reactive paper is then available for binding with the uh, rna molecules uh, it is not like if uh, we are talking for this direction then this is nadran and if we talk for the another direction then it is a sadran no the name nadran bloating is uh, like uh, because it is the extension form of the sadran method uh this is only the reason it is named as nadran otherwise uh, there is no a uh, specific uh, reason like on the basis of site like uh, this method was done in the northern direction so it is named as nadran bloating no it is just simply the extension of uh, sadran bloating technique so this is the reason it is said to be nadran bloating technique now this broad paper that is used is having a, a many uses like it is reusable it is effective in binding it is effective in binding uh, denatured dna and uh, this technique is uh, very advanced and uh, more recently it is used for the uh, demo demonstration of uh, mrna bands here what is done mrna is isolated obviously the population that required is mrna because here we are to separate the mrna molecule so what source we require the source required is also mrna itself that means messenger rna and uh, these messenger rnas are isolated from the cells that had been transformed transformed means if this is a foreign dna this is the bacterial cell then if foreign dna has been uptaken by this cell then this process is said to be transformation and the cells that are transformed is said to be said to be transformed cell process will remain almost same but uh, there will be the difference of filter paper and uh, the, the source 
so here mrna is taken from transformed cell it will it is again electrophoresed electrophoresed means it will be run under the effect of electric current and later on mrna are separated and they are transferred on to the nitrocellulose filter here as i already told you we have replaced this filter with the mino benzyl paper because it is no more uh, uh, capable of uh, binding with the mrna so here mrna is uh, allowed to hybridize by the single stranded probe when hybridization has taken place it is treated with si nuclease and rna and in this way we uh, it A single standard RNA or DNA probes they are digested. Don't get confused with here only mRNA molecules are being separated, right? And for separating the mRNA molecules, we require a filter that is made up of a number of series of uh, Wortman's paper. So by this method also, structure of mRNA uh, can be revealed to the extent. Uh, to the extent to which mRNA protects the nucleic acid probe. Now the last one is Western blotting technique. This is also said to be protein blotting or the electro blotting technique. It was developed by the Tobin et al. And uh, uh, it is the this technique is used to find newly encoded protein. Because what happens, you know, when uh, any cell is transformed. transformed means when any cell has uptaken the foreign dna when any cell has uptaken the foreign dna it will express the proteins now what protein is expressed this in turn is determined by the technique that is said to be western blotting technique its principle is little bit different and it is based on the principle of antigen antibody reaction that means it is an immuno detection technique because antigen uh, when we talk for the antigen we talk for the immuno uh, immunity and uh, this is the reason it is said to be immuno detection technique Say if this is the antigen, in correspondence to every antigen, there is the production of antibody. These antigen and antibodies are having the structure like lock and key. As a specific key fits into a specific lock, in the same way, a particular antigen binds to a particular antibody only. these proteins which are synthesized within the transformed cells these are said to be antibodies so this is the foreign antigen this is the foreign particle is said to be antigen when this antigen has been uptaken by any cell this cell will start expressing the proteins and these proteins are to be detected which are called as antibodies so this is a reason it is said to be like uh, this reaction uh, principle of this reaction is on the basis of antigen antibody reaction here we do not require radio labeled nucleic acid probe as we were using in case of southern and northern steps are very easy like very first uh, uh, whatever new protein that is encoded by the transformed cell uh, that is required to be uh separated that means that is required to be extracted so very step first step is the extraction of protein the cells which had been transformed again i repeat transformed cells are the cells into which any foreign dna molecule has entered so once uh, uh, once any foreign dna has entered into the cell that cell is transformed 
and uh, it has a uh, started uh, it has started expressing the proteins very first step is extraction of these proteins only so extract very first step is extraction of proteins like uh, dna uh, for the dna uh, as we were using the gel that was said to be a gross gel electrophoresis these all protein molecules are separated from each other by using another kind of electrophoresis that is said to be s d s page it stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis so here uh, here instead of a gross molecules we are using the different ones once proteins are separated by this gel then this gel is placed onto the buffer that is maintained at 40 degree celsius for an for an half an hour now once the gel is this gel onto which proteins uh, are separated this gel is placed onto the buffer then above the buffer is again placed nitrocellulose filter paper then as a result the proteins which are present in the buffer the which are present in the gel they will be transferred to the nitrocellulose filter paper now this nitrocellulose filter paper to which is binded the proteins it is further placed onto the uh, electrophoretic unit and uh, later on the electrophoretic unit is put into the transfer tank and uh, then the current supply uh, in the range 30 volt of, of uh, for 5 nr is given this uh, process uh, giving the temperature up to this much it allows the migration of proteins from the gel to the nitrocellulose filter because a protein is lying in the sodium dodecyl sulfate polyacrylamide gel so this from this gel it is to be transferred to the nitrocellulose filter and how this uh, transfer is taking place because we are placing this whole apparatus under the effect of electric field and under the effect of electric field proteins will start uh, migrating towards opposite poles and as a result they get uh, transferred from the uh, gel to the uh, say filter paper so this type of bloating is called as western bloating now once the proteins have moved to the filter paper then that filter paper will be hybridized with the radio labeled antibodies and uh, the ones which will bind together because as i already said a protein is an antigen that is expressed in uh, due to the antigen and uh, the antibodies uh, are uh, the antibodies formed are proteins right so we are to separate the proteins now so what we need to add we need to add antigen and antigen that are added are the uh, radio labeled antibodies right so washing will uh, remove all the un unbinded uh, molecules and it will allow the remaining of only the binded ones as a result they can be detected under the effect of photo radiography where wherever binding uh, uh, binding has taken place at that particular place there will be the generation of color color will be emitted and that color can be recorded in the computer and it can be assessed like this protein is of uh, what kind so this is used for the separation of proteins see here i am talking uh, from here this is the gel gel is placed uh, by wattman filter paper stack of old filter paper right and uh, below it is placed uh, below also it is placed by the coarse filter and wattman filter paper and the current is given in the direction negative to positive see some of the uh, uh, some of the Uh, these proteins they have us uh, they have uh, tra been transferred from the gel to the filter paper then this filter paper is inoculated with antibody 
then washing is done the ones which will not be binded together they will be removed and as a result we are going to have only uh, these antibodies right so this is about bloating techniques uh, we have discussed southern northern and western now i will uh, now i will move to so with this uh, we end with the hybridization techniques and now i am moving to the very next process that is polymerase chain reaction this is also very important one poly means many chain means to create a chain and reaction is very clear that means it is abbreviated by pcr that is the polymerase chain reaction right what is done in this polymerase chain reaction see uh, because you know whether we talk for the dna whether we talk for the rna or whether we talk for the proteins these are fragmented and as a result we used to have the dna of small length and if length is very low large then it is not as large as uh, uh, if as if compared with the whole size of the genomic dna so this is having the information but uh, this information uh, cannot be utilized to the maximum extent so what we do uh, we maximize the size of this uh, uh, dna strand and this is a maximization of the dna strand size is said to be polymerase chain reaction that means if i say from we had one dna then from the one we will be having two dnas from the two we are going to have four dnas from the four we are going to have eight dna so this is said to be polymerase chain reaction where the number of the uh, number where the amount of the dna can be multiplied to a greater extent this is said to be polymerase poly means many copies polymerase chain reaction so three things we are going to understand in this polymerase chain reaction very first we are going to cover introduction then we will know about working mechanism and then we will learn about certain applications of pcr so polymerase chain reaction what is polymerase chain reaction it is actually responsible for providing amplification of the specific dna sequence amplification means multiplication as i already said you as a result of fragmentation we have only a smaller dna sequence so this smaller dna sequence is increased to a larger dna sequence as a result of the reaction that is said to be polymerase chain reaction but this whole process is uh, done artificially and this is the reason it is said to be in vitro that means under artificial conditions we are uh, synthesizing the dna to a larger extent we are having automatic machines uh, uh, are there into which only we will uh, place the dna and when the end end will take place we will be having a amplified dna this technique was developed by the kari kari mulis uh in california in the year 1985 and he also got a nobel prize for his uh, uh, creation what is the benefit of this process the benefit is very clear like it is utilized to synthesize large quantities of dna fragment earlier how number of copies were being increased like whatever the dna fragments we were having they were uh, being incorporated into the vector and the uh, vector was allowed to incubate in a, it was allowed to enter into the host cell where it used to multiply and the number of the copies were being increased this was a simple scenario that was taking place uh, in the earlier methodologies but as a result of for this pcr a uh, large quantity of the dna fragment can be synthesized here also large fragment of the dna a large uh, number of the dna fragments can be synthesized but here we don't require cloning cloning means uh, here uh, this was a cloning where uh, recombinant dna was allowed to enter into the host and later on it was allowed to multiply 
for example if i give you one uh, example in terms of human beings then uh, you must have seen like uh, the one who has committed a crime uh, at a particular place how that particular criminal is uh, identified by the police team uh, identification is very easy because they used to inspect the area where murder or uh, some crime has taken place and even if they find out uh, uh, here small hair then from the that uh, single hair small hair presence are uh, they used to reach to the person who actually committed the crime right how this used to be possible because here used to be so very small but this here dna is extracted and it is uh, converted into the extension amplified form and from this amplified form because we are already having a library where there is already presence of uh, um, presence of various information regarding various uh, dna is already present so uh, when this uh, sequence is identified this sequence is later on uh, uh, for, uh, this is matched with the sequences available and in this way it helps in the recognition of the people who has uh, who is actually responsible for committing the crime so uh, this is used for the biological specimen uh, identification of biological specimen but what actually is pcr how it works this whole thing was informed by the scientist arlich and uh, he informed about pcr uh, technique in vast in, in his book that is said to be pcr technology pcr techniques are now automated that means they are automatically running and is carried out by a specialized design machine Uh, but uh, whether it is carried by the uh, machine, the well-designed machine, there lies certain requirements for PCR to proceed. Very first is DNA template, then primers, then enzyme. So very first is the DNA template. DNA template is required because DNA size is to be amplified. then what kind of dna should be amplified we require the template that is actually to be amplified template yesterday also in the last lecture also i told template template is actually the sequence of dna the sequence that is to be that is providing the information for uh, uh, the preparation of another strand this dna template is required then we require primer primer used to be the small sequence of oligonucleotide and here this small sequence is consisting of 180 to 30 nucleotides those nucleotides which are having similar g plus c content right this primer is allowed to bind to certain region of the dna template and uh, when this binding has taken place at that very particular time only uh, another strand of uh, synthesis will start suppose if it binds here then here will be the attachment of the enzyme then that enzyme will read the sequence from this uh, template and it will start synthesizing the another strand of the dna right so th this is the primer and uh, this is the function of the primer third is third requirement is of enzyme the enzyme that is that is required must be thermostable enzyme that means the enzyme that could uh, uh, remain stable at a, a temperature that is very very high uh, say it could survive at a temperature uh, 95 degrees celsius also right so the enzyme that we require is a thermostable enzyme and uh, here the enzyme that is used is said to be tag polymerase this polymerase enzyme is isolated from a bacterium that is called as thermosecreticus and the uh, feature of this enzyme is uh, it can uh, survive at 95 degrees celsius for 1 to 2 minute and uh, it has a uh, life of for more than 2 hours at this temperature this is the working mechanism 
when we talk for the mechanism it is all together completed in two three steps very first is the denaturation second is the primer annealing and uh, after primer annealing there is primer extension so the whole process is completed in three steps see this is a uh, uh, three requirements i said we need this is a dna molecule the uh, this is a dna molecule that we require uh that is acting as a template denaturation is what when the double stranded dna is converted to single stranded dna that is said to be uh, that is said to be denaturation now th second step we require primer annealing annealing means attachment this primer will bind to the three prime end uh, uh this will bind to the three prime end of this strand right Uh, this is five prime to three prime, and another one. The, see, this one is three prime to five prime strand. Uh, denaturation is what when the these bonds are broken, and uh, as uh, from double standard, we had single strands. This is denaturation. This is representing the lower strand, three prime to five prime, and this is representing the upper strand that is five prime to three prime. now now annealing is attachment of the uh, attachment of the primer so this primer attached to this three prime end bacha the till here we had denaturation and annealing right in annealing what is happening out this primer is binding to this uh, uh, three prime end here also i can show primer has binded to three prime end and uh, when it has binded to three prime end then primer extension will take place here there will be the addition of uh, four nucleotides magnesium ions are required and uh, this extension process is carried out in the presence of tag polymerase enzyme which is very stable at high temperature from so uh, when it will start moving on the three prime end it will start adding the bases and as a result from uh, a result again from a single stranded dna we had double stranded dna similar is the this case now this with this we completes the cycle one so very cycle one is denaturation annealing that is attachment of the primer and third is extension that is resulting into the synthesis of another strand of the dna now again denaturation will be carried out that means these uh, these are these are the one strand this is another strand we had only one strand but see from one strand we could synthesize the two strands now from two we are capable of synthesizing four from four we will be synthesizing eight and so on so this is said to be pcr reaction where a number of uh, where vast amplification of the dna is carried out that means one cycle will be giving the rise to the two and uh, how many further it can be uh, converted to two raised power n two raised power n this is this is two and raised power n at the end of the th when we talk for the third cycle uh, from the very one we had two from two we had four right when third cycle uh, is carried out it it nearly produces 16 strands and if this cycle is repeated about 50 times then 20 cycle each of three steps will produce 1 million copies of the target dna sequence and if we carry out this uh, these cycles up to the 30 cycles then it is going to produce 1 million copies see how from a small uh, uh, segment of the dna how much billion millions and billions copies of the dna can be synthesized so this is all about the working mechanism i will be talking for its applications like it is used in the diagnosis of pathogen because dna is amplified to a larger extent it can be very carefully studied so 
since the pathogens are the ones that grow slowly therefore the cells are found less uh, sometimes pathogens when grow slowly uh, sometimes uh, when the growth of the pathogen is slow then the cells are not uh, Uh, found to be infected and even if infection is present then it is in the very uh, small quantity so it it becomes difficult uh, to culture them but with the help of pcr based uh, say pcr based method we can detect uh, the presence of certain sequences of pathogen within the infected cells and as a result they can be removed before they cause any serious symptoms or diseases and it is also used in research uh, in the search we can amplify the segments and uh, it is also used to determine the orientation and location of restriction fragments then it is used in molecular archaeology and uh, it is also used in the disease, uh, diagnosis of plant pathogen that means it can uh, uh, it can uh, uh, identify it can identify the number of pathogens in various host for example viroids that is associated with apple viruses associated with the tmb mycoplasm associated with uh, uh, say certain uh, uh, organisms and fungi nematodes so we can also detect uh, uh, various pathogens which are actually responsible for infecting the plant so here i will go for the explanation of three methods the very important is denaturation is actually carried out at a temperature that is 95 degree celsius but this temperature is provided only for 15 seconds this much temperature for this much duration is sufficient enough to allow the denaturation of the dna as a result if we had this dna as a result this dna gets denaturated and it is converted into single strands of dna this process is also called as melting of target dna because dna has uh, converted double stranded dna has got converted into single standard two single strands dna so this is also said to be melting of target dna now this each strand is acting as a template for the synthesis of opposite strand now the next step is trimer and ylang say if this is the 3 prime end this is the 5 prime end and say if this is the 5 prime end and this is a 3 prime end so that means uh, this is 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 uh, prime to 5 prime this segment i have placed here and uh, this segment or this fragment i have placed here now there is going to be the primer annealing primer annealing basically takes place at 3 prime end so this is the 3 prime and this is 5 prime this is 5 prime and this is 3 prime here is going to be the attachment of primer so the primer will bind enzyme that will read the sequence from this uh, strand and will keep on synthesizing the dna in the opposite direction that means where it has attached in the opposite direction it will start uh, synthesizing the another strand uh, of this template dna similarly here will be the binding of the primer and in this direction it will keep on uh, synthesizing the another strand of the dna right so this step is said to be denaturation that is taking place at uh, that is taking place at 95 degree celsius for 1 to 2 minutes this annealing where there is the annealing means attachment where there is the attachment of the primer uh, this reaction is carried at a temperature lower than 95 that means somehow at 75 degree celsius because uh, attachment of the primer 
to be said the na template it occurs at a very low temperature once annealing has taken place again the temperature is raised to 95 degrees celsius and here is the addition of enzyme that is said to be tag polymerase one vent polymerase enzyme is also available vent but uh, this is more stable it could reside at uh, 95 degrees celsius temperature for 2 uh, to 3 minutes right now this is denaturation this is annealing now the next step is uh, extension extension is what extension means we here annealing has only taken place but i have shown you above annealing also this much is only annealing where primer has got attached to the free primer but after the annealing the next step is primer extension and in the primer extension primer will uh, read the sequence from the free primer and uh, it will extend the another strand of the dna the another strand which is now no more present slowly and slowly when it will keep on reading the sequence from the template then slowly and slowly will be the addition of nucleotides uh, uh, here and as a result it will complete the uh, synthesis of another strand of dna in the same way this the, in this direction so this is said to be primer extension and primer extension requires thermostable dna polymerase enzyme and uh, uh, it requires a stable enzyme that is d tag polymerase so these these three steps that is denaturation annealing and extension these these three steps completes the one cycle of pcr it is actually completing only one cycle of pcr now that means from this c if, if you could see the, from the one strand of the dna we had two strands of the dna from one we had two strands of dna similarly these in the cycle 2 these two strands will be placed here and they will be denatured this will result into the production of two strands and this will also result into the production of two strands this is said to be denaturation then again there is going to be the attachment of primer at 3 prime end at 3 prime end again there is attachment and in this direction it will synthesize the uh, it will keep on synthesizing the opposite strand right so this is cycle 2 when we will have cycle 2 from these two strands we are going to have four strands of dna in the third cycle we are having four strands from four to here to here to and here to that means from four 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 we are going to have eight strands right that means it is two raised power n we have number of copies this n can be 2 4 6 eight anything right two raised power n is a basic formula to identify how many number of copies are going to be synthesized so see as i told you two enzymes can be used very first is tag polymerase Uh, in the third step or either vent polymerase uh, this is isolated from thermococcus littoralis uh, and it is uh, uh, it is uh, sin, uh, isolated from bacterium that is thermococcus thermococcus littoral uh, aquaticus and uh, for uh, it's uh, for these these since i am to be in the active state magnesium ion concentration is maintained in the range between 1 to 4 millimolar so one cycle is going to produce two then two raised power n 
2 raised power 2 that means 4 then 6 8 and so on right third cycle is producing 16 strands this is one cycle this is one cycle then we will have second cycle second cycle from second cycle we are going to have third cycle in the very first cycle we had four then we had eight and in the third we had 16 strands only right so production third cycle is going to produce 16 strands and you know this pcr process can be repeated about 50 times but out of the 50 if i talk for the 20 cycles only each each cycle consisting of three steps then it, it results into the production of 1 million copies but if out of 50, I say we are to go for only 30 cycles, then only it is going to produce 1 billion copies. And in each cycle, newly synthesized DNA strands, they serve as a template for the new strands. Obviously, uh, this new, the one, uh, this, this was older strands. Then newer were synthesized and newer are further acting as a template for the synthesis of another strands. Uh, the amount of the primers that is required is in between 10 to 100 picomole. Uh, if we talk for the automatic uh, PCR machine, then it can carry 25 cycles and can amplify the DNA 10 raised per 5 uh, in 75 minutes, right? This is the same thing that I have repeated again. Now second cycle starts. As the first cycle completes, then the second cycle will again start with the denaturation process. Only where double standard, uh, uh, double standard DNA is converted into single standard DNA. This is repeated again and again. And uh, after n number of cycles, two raised bar. Uh, Par n molecules of DNA are going to be generated. How we can express the efficiency of the PCR like it is correct or not? Then this can be calculated by a formula that is PCR product yield. PCR product yield. And uh, this PCR product yield is actually equal to the uh, uh, input of target amount. This formula is to be utilized for uh, calculating the uh, efficiency of the PCR process. So if we are carrying uh, uh, RTH, that means uh, not N number, R number of cycles, uh, then we are going to have R number of extension also. For this polymerase uh, is required that is going to convert RNA into DNA and uh, this must be thermostable. So this is all about uh, say a polymerase chain reaction. Hope it is clear to all. I will just show that diagram also. Just a minute. See, so this is the PCR reaction. This is one strand. This one strand when it is denaturated, that means it is exposed to high temperature. These bonds among the uh, hydrogen bonds among the two strands break. And the two strand, one strand is this and the second strand is this, they get separated from each other. Now we are going for the second uh, step that is annealing, that is attachment of primer. So this uh, three prime to five prime that uh, this this is the strand. Again, it is located here, and uh, here is shown the attachment of primer. Primer basically binds at three prime end, right? Uh, in this in this direction, we have attached it uh, here. So this went in this direction, and this went in this direction, and this result. Uh, this is uh, cycle one. So from one DNA, we had two strands of the DNA. Then in the cycle two, from the two, we are going to have four strands of DNA. And uh, this continue up to the end cycle of the DNA, right? 
so this is all about my today topic and uh, if there lies any doubt we can clear it right now thank you and uh, stay home and stay blessed thank you